What's up guys, Ming the Merciless 93 here, making more videos for PokerVIP.com. We're hanging out on this festive Christmas atmosphere. We've flopped a set on a relatively dry board texture. Both dummies have checked to us. We're going to go ahead and bet half pot here. Your opponent could still have a hand like pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket eights, any of that. And it looks like we're going to take this one down. That's all right. It could be worse. We could have gotten check raised and lost to aces. This is going to be a clear folding combination. The ace deuce offsuit versus a limper. You could get a little bit creative with that sort of a hand on the button, especially if it's suited, then you're going to be raising it up no matter what. But when it's offsuit and you're in an earlier position, you just don't want to dick with it. Looks like we have notes on one dude at the table. And our note says, overplay top pair doesn't bluff much. That's a problem. That's a problem. When somebody doesn't bluff much, that's a problem. I mean, it's not a problem for you. It makes them very easy to play against. But, in general, you want to bluff. You want to bluff at a portion of bluffs that is relative to your value range. Generally about a 2 to 1. A lot of cases you're offering your opponent 2 to 1 to call, so you'll need that nice little tasty 2 to 1 ratio. Well, two value combos for one bluff, whatever. You guys know what the formula is all about. A couple of different competitors than the last video we had here. This is video two. We will have videos three and four following this. Seven, eight offsuit under the gun. That's a fold. You'd raise it up if it was suited, especially if there were weaker, weaker players in the blinds that you wanted to play against. You try to play as many pots as possible against those weaker players. So we're willing to get a little out of line especially if the guy on the button's not really making use of position by three betting us a bunch or flatting, floating, doing other things that generally reduce our success rate for steals and isolation attempts in early position. Oh, what are these people doing? It's always, it's always a wonder to me, you know, sometimes they take like 17 minutes or something to make a decision and you're just like, what are you doing? You're in the small blind. It's pretty easy. You limp, you raise, you fold, you call. And we're going to fold the 6-4 offsuit. Well, I guess if everybody and their brother's going to limp, we would potentially limp it because it does make straights. As it stands, we're just going to go ahead and get out of there with TD Fitch isolating. Eight ten offsuit on the button. We're going to raise this one up if it folds to us. Otherwise, we'll be folding this combo. Don't want to have it in our 3-bet range. Don't want to have it in pretty much any range whatsoever. Not really sure why we don't have a 3x button here. We are going to 3x it on that tasty little button. This is a relatively dry board texture. We'd prefer to have a diamond, but nonetheless, we're gonna be able to get away with a half pot continuation bet against a guy named Foam Hat Waffle, whatever that means. We get called and he can call with a lot of different combinations here. He can have diamond draws. We don't block any of those. He could have a two, he could have a three, he could have pocket fours up. So when we hit a 10 on the turn, even though we're going to lose to a Jack, we're not going to be raised that often unless he has two pair plus, and we're going to get value from every other part of his range here that doesn't already beat us with a jack. And we get to play pretty efficiently on the river, checking back. Now we lose to five, six of diamonds, ace, five of diamonds. And we just get to check back and hope he doesn't have a jack. Unfortunately for us, he has a jack this time, but it's important to not think in terms of what the results were in this actual hand because he's going to have a ton of other different combinations in his range that aren't strictly going to be top pair. I mean, he's going to have flush draws, he's going to have straight draws, he's going to have all kinds of stuff in that spot. He's going to have other pocket pairs. Mathematically, it's a pretty easy value bet on the turn. And we have trips over here. He bets 40 cents on the turn. We're just going to flat call in position. We could be beaten by pocket sixes, pocket deuces, and also four or five. But nonetheless, we have a pretty easy call. Don't like the river card too much. It does put a four straight up there, and he does pot it again. This is probably strong enough to call since when he pots it on the turn, he's not super likely to have a five unless it's exactly something like five X of hearts. Uh, we're just going to have to call here. 
He has 5-6, which is reasonable. Wouldn't assume that he would be potting a 6 on the turn. Nonetheless, there it is. It did happen. We aren't going to be folding trips with the flush draws, having missed, etc. Just going to have to pay the man his chips. We're going to check in the big blind with the 8-6 offsuit. You lose a lot of pots in poker, folks. You do. You do. To get to the to the profits, to get to the juice, you got to squeeze the fruit. And we're going to be folding the 8-6 on this board texture. Nothing going on. Five four offsuit, not much going on here. Some cases we'll be limping it. This case we'll be folding it. If we had a suited combination, I would go ahead and three bet TD Fitch over here. He does seem to be isolating the limpers here quite a bit, or at least each opportunity that he's had. Ten seven on the button. We flop an open industry draw on a three way pot, but the problem here is that even though we have a straight draw, it's a relatively obvious hand and that if we hit an eight or a king, our opponents can either have a chop or they can have a slightly better draw sometimes. And they'll also, well, I mean, they'll have some two pair combinations and stuff as well, but we're not gonna get paid off as often. Uh, we're gonna float in position when he leads out, he could have as little as just a queen in this spot. Maybe we can decide to bluff him here on this ace turn. But uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm probably just gonna end up folding especially with the club on the board now. It just doesn't end up being a very good spot for us. We're not likely to get paid off. The implied odds aren't very really good, and we have to rely on fold equity when he checks the river, which is not super likely to happen. Not all that great. Over here on the 9-jack-3 with two spades board texture, we're not going to continuation bet ace high. It doesn't play very well going forward. We have a flat call versus a min-raise with pocket eights. You could also 3-bet here. Kind of depends. I mix it up. In this spot, we're just going to go ahead and flat call. We're just going to check our ace high down. We do win against some random ace high combos. Now we're losing to pretty much everything in the deck. Other than some guy with a suited connector that isn't very aggressive. We're going to lose to a king, a jack, a nine. And he's got one of those combos we beat somehow, some way. A random queen high. That's pretty much it. Over here, this guy's potting it. Four people in the pot. Two over cards. No equity. Pocket eights goes down the drain. Not much to do. Not much to say. We got a half pot bet on the turn from Mazda. And he does get called. We have the eight of diamonds, so there's less flush draws in either player's range. Both players could still have a jack here. Still have top pair. There's all kinds of kind of stuff here. We've got a lead for 1.5 on the river with just queen 10. That's all, just queen 10. And that guy didn't even consider raising with his trips on the river, which is kind of weird. Very strangely played. Queen 10 did not bet big enough to get much fold equity, so I would assume that the other player is not going to fold anything that would be ahead of queen 10 whatsoever. Probably not even folding ace high for that amount, really. Players in these games are just going to click call. They're not going to ever really decide, hey, I'm done. I'm going to fold here. You don't have much fold equity, see? I'm going to raise it up with pocket kings under the gun. We get flat called by a guy named No Stress Gaming. And we get a board texture that's not very favorable to us. 769 is going to have a lot of two pairs, a lot of sets, a lot of things that beat us. We're not happy here whatsoever. We are going to defend with a six. And this guy leads into us for a dollar. We're just going to call. We know we bet half pot before with a value combo. Not really sure what this is all about. That's a decent card. You know, he's got less of those combos that beat us now just because there's less sets. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and check fold this ace X combo. I think it's a pretty reasonable spot for us to just go all in. We're going to lose to sets anyway. There are flush draws out there. There are two pairs that we beat. Uh, he could still have like nine ten or something. He just has nine deuce. I kind of gave him a little bit more credit kicker wise, but we'll go ahead and take that 19 funky ass dollars. I gave you more credit Mazda, but then again, you drive a Mazda. Should have given you less credit. We're going to fold. Not much we can do here. Ten three, not getting much done on this board texture on the left hand table. Queen-5 offsuit. 
mostly going to be a folding combination, although if everybody and their brother limps, I'll probably still fold it. Doesn't make any straights, and it's not suited. No straights, no flushes, so you might as well flush it. Looks like Mazda's back, and he's gone to the bucket for four more dollars. Reached deep down into the barrel of monkeys to see who had any left, any bananas left. We've got a limp, and I believe we can isolate here on the button. I believe we can isolate with our 9-10 offsuit. It's relatively playable. If you think you don't have any fold equity at all against your opponent, then I would advise against doing this without better combos than 9-10 offsuit. But until you know that, just go ahead and pound on them, see if it works out. If he never folds, then this isn't all that great. Looks like here we're going to get the fold. Can't really complain. Jack-8 offsuit in the cutoff is going to be a folding combination. King-7 offsuit on the button we will raise if it reaches us. Maybe Mazda wants to take a ride on the redding. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of at a... I'm just going to fold here with the King-7. If it was suited, we'd definitely raise it. If it was King-9, we'd definitely raise it. We just want a little bit of playability, you know? You do get called at enough of a frequency that you need a little playability to your hands. You don't want to just have complete trash unless you think you have way too much fold equity. If you think that's the case, then you can get away with it for some of those, like, me, you know, just remedial, maybe I have top pair, maybe I don't type combos. But uh, otherwise, you'd want to make straights and flushes. You need a little, little something going for your hand. We are going to isolate with the Ace of Spades and the Ten of Diamonds on Table 1. And we get flat called by the Foam Waffle on the button. And I'm assuming that that's going to bring the limper along as well. This board texture is not great for us. It's going to hit their range a bit better. And we don't have any equity moving forward. So we're just going to check our ace and our 10. And mostly give up on this pot. If somebody bets we're mostly folding. And if they check back, then we'll see what happens on the turn. We'll be folding the 2-6 offsuit. These are some festive tables, aren't they? Look at this. Now that's an interesting card in the turn. We're not going to get a jack to fold over two streets, but we do block ace jack, ten jack, and we have a gut shot now. And both players checked, so I think it's a reasonable spot to go ahead and bet twice. If we win the pot, excellent. If we get it heads up, excellent. If we get raised, we'll fold. And if both players call, we'll probably just give up unless we hit an eight. And it looks like we get raised a giant amount from this dummy, which I'm assuming is going to be some sort of a two-pair set, something like that. Generally, they're not even raising ace jack like this, so we're just going to have to give that one up. Now, if he had a good hand, he probably should have flat called because I would have bluffed that river. So he could have made more money than playing his hand straight forwardly. But if he bluffed me, you know, good job, good job. Mostly you don't see a lot of bluffs in that spot, though. If I decided to randomly call him down, he just have two pairs set a high percentage of the time or have hit the straight himself. Tricky, tricky. We get three bet. This guy calls. We're going to call. We're just set mining here. I'm just looking for a three on the flop. And we're done. Mostly. I'm going to be a limp over here from no stress. We're going to go ahead and raise it up out of position with our queen jack. It's just good enough to raise out of position. It's got some playability. He's limping. Can we just flip these fucking flops around here? I'm just going to maybe like we'll put in a little order for a, a swap, a flop swap. Hey, we'll just go ahead and continuation bet here. 3, 4, 10 is still relatively dry. We have two over cards and backdoor straight draws. Now that's kind of a mixed bag, to be honest, with the ace. We're going to go ahead and double barrel, but we're not always going to get folds here. He'll still call with a 10 sometimes. We're going to just fold this 3-3 three, three hand as well on the river versus a pot size bet. It's a little bit suspect. We get the double barrel through. There's a lot of combinations of suited hands with a 3 or a 4. And also 6 combinations each of 5, 6s, 7s, and 8s. And, you know, it's a pretty good spot for us to just be bluffing on the turn. Might be able to get away with a triple barrel in that spot if you're feeling it. Not something I'd always suggest, but it is something you can get away with from time to time. The beautiful part about playing against low stakes opponents is that they make their hand way too obvious way too often. Like foam hat waffle. I make it like 80 cents. He makes it $3.80. He's just saying, look, motherfucker, I've got it. And it's better than whatever the hell you've got. They just throttle you for value. You see that in live games too. Like if the pot's got $300 in it, your opponent will just bet $250 when he has a value hand. And when he doesn't have a value hand, he'll either check or he'll try to fire like 180 or 150 or something just to get you to fold a little something. That's not even a bad strategy in some cases. In some scenarios, that's a fine exploitative play. Either way, everything, everything in poker 
sort of revolves around bluffs because you have once you get a handle for value combos and we'll just go ahead and set mine here given that we have two players this is not a great spot to be set mining we don't like flat calling on the small blind whatsoever we're going to take this opportunity but once you get your head around the value combos and whether you're ahead, whether you're behind, like if I look at this board texture, eight, eight, ace, eight, six, and I can say, well, my deuces are behind their value combos. So I guess I'm folding here because the only way I'm actually accruing equity is if my opponent's bluffing a lot. And if he's not bluffing a lot, well, then I'm beat by his value combos. Whereas if we had a set of aces, we'd know that we were ahead of their value combos because we have the best hand on the board texture. So in which case, my opponent would need to either bluff me off aces by representing a flush somewhere, which certainly wouldn't happen, or he'd have to outdraw me by hitting a straight or something like that, a backdoor flush. But you kind of get the idea. Everything is going to revolve around bluffing frequency. When your opponent bets, a lot of the time when you're on the river and you're left there with top pair, no kicker, second pair, even two pair on a board that has straights and flushes, you're just thinking, damn, can I call here? And the only thing that you should really be concerned with is bluffing frequency because you're always behind their value range. Otherwise, you would know better. You would look at that spot and go, yep, well, that's an easy call. Yep, I got top two pair here. He can have a ton of worse value combos. I'm ahead of his value bets. He'll value bet down to top pair, top kicker, whatever else. So once you get a handle on value combos and how they influence whether you're calling or raising from your specific hands perspective, then bluffing is pretty much everything else. Because bluffing is what defines the way you get equity like this when there's more i get a ton of equity and when there's none i get no equity so it's one of the most important game mechanics for you to kind of wrap your head around that that's the way the game functions we got ace queen offsuit in the big blind we're pretty happy about that And there's a raise. We might be squeezing it up. We're definitely three betting for sure. But can we get a squeeze through? Maybe so. Maybe so. Start spreading the new. All right. We are going to squeeze here, guys. Now, when you're out of position, you want to make your squeeze relatively large. You don't want to give your opponents very good odds to continue. Make it, make it difficult for them to play in position against you. We make it $1.70. We get the fold from the original Razor, which means we're probably going to get the fold a lot from Fat Mancho. We are slightly deeper. I did make it relatively large, and we do get the fold, so that's, that's perfectly fine. I don't want action. You might be thinking to yourself, man, you had ace-queen. You want to get a call there. No, you don't, dummy, because you're out of position, and you got to hit a flop, and you're not going to hit a flop that often, and then you got to play multiple streets. The, by far, the best thing to have happen is that they fold and you win the pot. Yeah, sure, if you got the nuts, if you got a pair of aces, all right, whatever, sure. You want a little action if that's the case. But that's not always the case. That's rarely going to be the case. Most of the time, you just have some medium strength hand, even if it's a good hand. You know, you bet with a flush draw on your opponent's call. I'm not happy with that. I'd rather just have them fold. Yeah, sure, when you hit your flush, you win a big pot. That's, that's fantastic. That's fine and dandy. I'd rather just win the pot. Trust me, over time, you'd rather just win the pot. No action, that's plenty of action. Ten five suited. We're going to raise the button with our four five of clubs, and there's a raise in front of us, so the ten five suited becomes a folding combination. Now this is a paired board. Our hand sucks ass. Uh, it's a pair. It's a fair hand to triple off with in some cases. We're just going to go ahead and see bet. Pretty awful. Hopefully we get the fold on the king eight king board, and we do get the fold. Yes. Two five offsuit. That's going to be another folding combination. 5-6 of clubs. We're going to be raising this in the cutoff or 3-betting it if our opponent raises. And he does. You can go either way with this hand. You can make a case for folding it. You can make a case for 3-betting it. You can make a case for flat calling it. I like to do a mixture of the 3 depending on what I think is good in the spot. 5 position, more likely to 3-bet. If I'm out of position, probably have a mixed strategy that includes mostly folding or flat calling. And it looks like we get the 3-bet through. And we're going to fold the old 3-7 offsuit. That's one thing I'll say about global poker is that they do get involved with the festivities. You know, for Halloween, they had these sweet-ass avatars. I got this little evil-looking Grim Reaper skeleton bro. And then he gets to hang out on Christmas. That's great. That's like from the movie Scrooge, Bill Murray style. 
Oh, look at this. This is a festive table. It's a festive table. Makes you feel good playing poker. And it's a green poker table. You haven't seen that in quite a while. Even all the casinos in Vegas, they don't even have green felt on the poker table. They think they gotta be fancy and make it... They, they won't even make the shit red. It's gotta be maroon. Just so they can say it like an asshole. What kind of table is that? Is it a red table? No, it's maroon. Shut up. It's fucking red. It's a lazy red. It's a red that's not wearing its best clothes. <sighs> Alright, we're going to fold 10-8 offsuit. We've got a 5-8 offsuit combination over here on table 2. I thought the table was going to break. It looked like everybody was bouncing, but thankfully we're still here. And we'll play heads up. You know, we'll, we'll get the action on. You don't get a lot of heads up action. It's pretty nice. We're going to have second pair. I like leading out in spots like this. You know, there's a relatively dry board texture. There are some straight draws out there, but it's a limped pot, man. And not everybody's going to have a king, so you have to protect your hand. If you had a king with no kicker, like king deuce, you could check this hand perfectly fine. But when you have an eight, it makes a lot of sense to just lead out in a limp pot. And go ahead and protect your hand. You know, if, if Fat Mancho has, you know, checked a king, perfectly fine. It just, you win the pot. Like, winning the pot uncontested is a huge, huge thing. Because it denies your opponent equity, and you don't have to deal with future streets, showdown, whatever else. It's sort of a, a, a concept that's just becoming more uh, popular, uh, just as the realization hits the masses, that just taking down a pot is pretty fucking nice. So just leading out when you have those you know, medium strength hands that are sometimes good, people just play better in position than they used to. It used to be where you would just check there, call a bet, and then see if your opponent checked down or see what happened on the, on the turn of the river. Not anymore. Now we just protect that shit. Just bam. Uh, whenever we check all the way down to the river and we hit a seven, it's a pretty easy value bet. Now when we get raised, I'm going to pay this dummy off because I'm getting four to one, but I'm assuming that we never have the best hand here. He's just got some sort of slow play. The vast majority of the time. Yeah, there's a boat for sure. It's just, you know, it's just one of those spots where, like, you're getting such a good price. You just call and, and pay the dude off. Might have been a misclick. You know, maybe his cat pissed on his leg and he's just, you know, he's tilted, whatever. For the most part, you just never have the best hand. And if that was any significant money at my stakes, I would, I would probably just be folding. That's mostly just because, remember, everything goes back to bluffing versus value range. So if he has a value range there, what is it? Maybe the worst hand he would raise would be like a7, something like that. Other than that, he's going to have 10x, whatever. So we're losing to his value range, which means we're relying on bluffs to be good enough for the time. And if he never bluffs like that, and his cat already used the litter pan, then we're probably not going to be good enough times to make the call. We're just going to check these deuces. Check, 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 check. And it checks all the way around again. This is a hand that's going to get beat too often by a one-pair hand, especially on the Six River. And it looks like those deuces are pretty pretty tasty right here. We couldn't value bet them or anything, though. 8-5 offsuit, we're mostly just going to fold. Even though there's a limp, bro, not going to isolate with a combination this poor. Jack-8 of clubs, we're going to fold. And you could make a case for isolating with a hand this poor, but again, it kind of relates back to fold equity. If we think our opponents are folding a ton of the time, we'll just go ahead and raise them up. Otherwise, we're just going to get a hell out of dodge. Look for a slightly better opportunity. And when you see people isolating limpers, especially when they make it a small amount, if you're going to isolate a limper, you want to make it a pot size raise. You know, if they, if they limp for 10 cents here, you don't want to make it 30 cents. You want to make it like 45 cents. Make it expensive for your opponents to three bet. Because if you don't, then we just get to take advantage of that. You make it 30 cents, I get to make it $1.20. You make it 40 cents, and suddenly I got to make it like fucking $1.90 or $2. That's not very efficient for me. I'm going to have to tighten up my three bet range. So, yeah, anytime you sort of, I mean, it's different if you have the button, then you get final say. So if your opponent makes a smaller three bet, you know, it's a little bit easier for you to maneuver. I still prefer a bigger isolation raise anyway. Your range should generally be stronger than the guy who's limping and calling, which means you're going to have an advantage post-flop. 
And if you get heads up, that's certainly favorable for us. But just in general, makes it more difficult for your opponents to interact. Not much going on. 7-4 offsuit, queen-5 offsuit. Our opponent's taking their sweet-ass time. All right. We get dealt the delicious queen-4 of hearts, which we'd play on the button, and about nowhere else. We do have a pocket 10s, though. Nice little pair of pocket 10s. 10 of hearts, 10 of spades. If you play live poker, memorize your two cards. Don't have to look back at your at your whole cards, you know. Very, very few times do you want to look back. You just want to memorize them. If you look down and you see a pair of tens, notice that you have this the spades and the diamonds or whatever. Just memorize that shit. We have ace king of hearts over on table one. We've isolated with our pocket tens. We get called by one dude. We flop. Top set. Now, you could make a case for checking back here, but we're not going to. We're just going to go ahead and bet. We don't have to bet very big. Half pot will get the job done. Again, relatively dry. We're going to go ahead and make a big raise out of position with ace-king of hearts just because we're out of position, and we don't play like a three- or four-way pot, and we don't mind just taking down the 35, 40 cents that's out there. Like I said, perfectly fine. It looks like half pot's going to get through there with the top set. And again, checking's not the worst. It's all right. Uh, here, we're just going to make a straight-up half pot continuation bet. Raise it up with 10 jack of clubs. We're taking that one down, too. Don't mind it. Don't mind it. Prefer to get action, but what can you do? Can't win them all. Can't build a big pot when they've got nothing. We have the 10 of hearts there, too, so maybe we check back 10s with the 10 of hearts specifically, but I'm, I'm pretty all right with it. We'll get much money from that combo anyway. Here we have a relatively dry board texture, but it is a three-way pot. We are out of position, and we have pretty much no equity going forward. So I'm just going to elect a check here. I would be stabbing in some of these board textures. You know, you're not always going to be betting an ace, ace, x board, but this is a reasonable one to bet if you're three-way. I just kind of prefer to have a backdoor flush draw or something. Just a little something, you know. We do have the 9-10 jack going for us, but it's a bit worse without at least a backdoor flush. If you had a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw, that's certainly a spot where I'm betting. Just helps us win a little bit more frequently whenever we do get called and they have an ace. And of course, they're going to boat up some percentage of the time there. And we're not going to make that many straights or flushes. But if any, I mean, any bit of those little small incremental things, they add up very, very quickly over time. Because let's say this, you're going to play a million hands of poker. If you had some favorable result happen at like a half percent of the time over a million hands, that's a lot. So all those little tiny fractions here and there, all those little bet sizing mistakes, all those little mistakes that you make, that shit really, really adds up. People think poker's about making aces and then getting a get against kings or top pair. You know, a lot of the times those big pots just play themselves. It's in those little tiny spots, those little ones that come up where you make a little bit more than your opponents would have made. And you do that shit over a very large sample. See what we got for our next hands. Jack seven and jack eight down that drain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What happened? It made a little chingly sound. A six. Not gonna do much with this. Nine six down the drain there. I think that's going to wrap up this video after this hand, guys. We're gonna go ahead and isolate with our a six. We get called, and it's a paired board. We block ace-5 and 6-5, and we have a 6 of spades, so it's a pretty good spot to just continuation bet. They do have some 5s in their range. Remember, we've got good blockers to two of their 5s, and when they call here, they could definitely have a 5 of king or flush draw, so it's not a great turn card, and we definitely don't win this hand very frequently. We might win sometimes at showdown with a spade beating a king, and I wouldn't assume that they're going to bet a king here. So even though we have the 6 of spades and we have a flush, we're just going to go ahead and fold because our opponent would essentially have to have some sort of a king and overvalue it. Or they'd have to be just some weirdo. Like, what else could they possibly have there? They could even have something like pocket nines with a spade or something. So it's just, you know, our spade's not good that often. They're potting it in a spot where the hands that we're beating are more likely to check. And maybe we can even make a value bet if they do. But in this case, 
not going to be the case. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and pause the video, and we'll see you for part three.